doesn't do that. It says uh, due diligence here. Should, or should I call you sheeples? Oh, uh, you don't want to be a sheeple? Ah, uh, but the data doesn't show the same thing though. So our channel sub uh, count go from 1650 to 1640 and then go up to 1650, go down to 1640. And today it went down to 1630. At this point, uh, me and number two were like, yeah, just let it be guys. Like uh, at this point, I realized that, you know, it doesn't really matter. Some people just think all the videos I made just to get you guys to get my Patreon. But the, the funny thing is we didn't even have a Patreon set up and we didn't even have a Patreon really in the you know description for you to join yet. And then they make you those kind of uh, accusations or assertions. It's just, it's so, this entire team mentality is so dumb. It's like, oh, you're on my team. You're either bear or you're a bull. And you're like, oh my God, you're so bad because you decided to take on the other side. But in reality, I am a trader. I do not take any sides. I make money. Does that make sense? It's so childish. <coughs> oh my God. <coughs> I was laughing so hard reading all of your comments and I almost choked on my own saliva. Because to be honest, it doesn't even make sense to even have a side. Because the direction play does not make sense anymore unless you're super serious. Like, you're super serious about where this thing's gonna go. For example, right? Like, for example, what I did on March 2020 is I know that by the end of April, it's already gonna be bottom because all of the indicators are showing that if the, if the Dow keep dropping like that, the entire economy is gonna collapse. And then at one point, when you use certain algorithm to figure out, like, where everything is going, you will realize that when the market down by 20% or like somewhere around 15%, there's always going to be a correction anyways. So then you spot the direction play and you will be a bullish person. That makes sense, right? Every play you made in March and even you just like buy something, right? You can buy Moderna at $20. You buy like Howley Burton at freaking $2 or $6. And all you have to do is sit there and wait, right? As long as you have the quick cash flow, just sit there and wait all the way until like, December 31st, 2020, sell all of your things, made a lot of money anyways, right? Or you can just be like me, uh, January, you short, the, you short the entire market because you know that supply chain, there's something wrong if you with supply chain, you have information about COVID, nobody believes you, short it, make six acts and just leave, right? Right now, it's a total different game. All right, all right, all right. I was, I was very hasty and I wasn't trying to, I wasn't being myself by entering meta material. I mean, this video is just gonna be me reflecting on myself. I don't really care if you guys watch it or not at this point, because because some of you are gonna be like, oh my god, you're so great, and I love you guys. For those of you who praise me, you guys are gonna make money anyways, because we're a uh, educational trading channel, and eventually, I want to train all my loyal subscribers to become emotionless. You shouldn't have any emotion when you're trading. I was talking to Jacob, one of my friends who trades option, uh, who trades futures, and he blew his his um, position on Friday, and he's like, "How are you feeling?" I was like, "I'm I'm about 14k in a hole, and I don't feel anything anymore. I actually don't. I don't feel anything. I can make everything very. I can make every decision very rationally. Directional play is not really in my playbook anymore." Because it's it's just futile. Even though my you know my prediction can be super super accurate, um, I I do those predictions. A is just to piss number two off because number two is like there's no way you get it right. But but I did, and I consistently do. So I understand the the price action play, but at the same time, due to the liquidity tied up, I cannot make certain plays. So it's, it's a dilemma, but you learn a lot by, by, by observing what my subscribers are saying, by observing the mass psychology plays out. It's just such a sheeple thing. Like you have such team mentality. But the thing is, no matter if you reside with the red sheep, the black sheep, the blue sheep, or the, the white sheep, it doesn't matter. Because all sheep is going to get slaughtered by the institution anyways. You might as well just find a good shepherd and protect you, right? <laughs> it's just so, it's, it's just like... <sighs> Such it, all the team psychology is just so it's called groupthink. It's so stupid. Same thing as um, when you say stuff like, "Oh my God, you shouldn't give Robinhood any credit." But the thing is, Robinhood has to pivot. Their business model is all about gathering the uh, gathering as much as you know accounts as possible, and then they literally sell the accounts to you know hedge funds who are, who are MMs, or they just doing everything that goes through dark pool because they're not licensed or they do not wanna have you know, direct buying 
um, blocks of, of, of trades or, or direct buying trades as a part of their business model. This is what will keep them profitable because if you look at Fidelity's, um, you know, there are tank use and tank you realize that the two different, it's two different type of brokerage firms. They have their own business model just because they're helping hedge funds or just because their business model benefits the hedge funds ultimately does not mean that it's not a good stock. I'm not here to criticize, you know, hedge funds, a good thing or a bad thing. I always say, you know, hedgies do this, hedgies do that, the shorties. At the end of the day, it's all about how dynamic your trading strategy is. And, and you know, hedge funds can be good, hedge funds can be bad. You, you can't just, you know, it's, it's the same thing as racism. It's de- literally determination against hedge funds. You're just like, hit hedge fund and hands like every hedge funds are bad. No, the, the reason why you guys can make money in AMC, do you really think it's because of retail flow? No, absolutely not. They added so much position at $28 and then everything just shoot up to $60. They are the ones who dictate the market. You're just playing around with the flow there. And then when they exit, you just backhold. You just keep buying, keep buying, keep backholding. And it's the same thing as, you know, a lot of you are keep deleting your comments for previous MMAT videos. I started warning my subscribers when it's at $7. So like, stop doing average daily, you know, average downs. And, and some dumb people just like commenting on time. It's like, oh yeah, uh, you are probably averaging down. You're warning your subscribers not to averaging down. No, dude. Look look at the price movement here. Right now it's around $3 and you think it's already bottom. But no, there's no such thing as bottom of a stock. And due to all of the capital manipulation and everything, and when you look at other big funds, you're like, oh my God, they, they entered 100,000 shares. No, unless a big fund buy 2 million shares or more, it doesn't matter at all because, because George has 268 million shares outstanding. The fact that he, he has too much shares outstanding and the fact that, that the deal with Torch is kind of, in the end, his own his own advantage also plays how to how to describe it in, in a better way by not getting into what it, it, the problem with the torch deal is it's more like he's just he needs a finance degree or he needs a more he need he needs a number two okay he needs a number two that will tell him that he's doing something wrong or you know because number two always check on me right if i do something stupid he's like why would you do that why wouldn't you tell me before you do that and i was like oh i'm so sorry i will do that beforehand right every time I'm, next time i make a rash decision i will tell you that um and yeah he needs someone like that he needs someone to tell him that okay you're you're bleeding out your cash right now what are you gonna do for the next three years you do understand that increasing production and oem plays really need cash right you're gonna have a burner that accelerated and you acquired the thing what's gonna happen a b and c CEOs and CFOs are always sitting in a room like, you know, once a week or even once a day if it's, you know, have a tight circle or whatever and be like, hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? we got to talk about this. we got to talk about that. What's the what's the long term play here? What do you really want to do? Like we need to focus here, George. Why? Because institutional investors, I I have the perspective of institutions and eventually maybe I'll go work for an institution and I will make money. This is just how it goes because retail mentality will never make money. Because retail mentality is all, all about, it's like you go to a supermarket, everything's marked down by 50%. You're like, oh, buy, 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 buy. And what do you end up with? You end up with all the toilet paper that you don't need, you can buy. You can literally use them for 10 years and you keep consuming, keep consuming, keep, keep, keep consuming. Because you want something cheap. But no, institute. it's not how the financial market works. I mean, I, I finally have this epiphany that you know the entire financial market is a reverse logic. It's not a reverse logic per se, it's more about you have to see it in a different perspective. If you see it as 80% of the people who see it the same way, you're doomed to lose money anyways. Therefore, a lot of my views, a lot of you, a lot of you don't like, or a lot of you don't agree with, this is why I'm doing it right. Because at the end of the day, I've always proven myself to be right. And a lot of you who are my loyal followers, I love you guys. Why? Because you're the patient guys who see it, who, who follow through and who see it, like who see my growth and who see who sees my prediction come through one by one, day by day, year by year, not even year by year at this point, it's month by month, right? All of my original positions, even the even the joking BB one, right? You guys know that I made a thousand percent on two of my BB contracts. And that's where like, that's where all the like, you know, meme stock players are at, at the peak and everything. We just ride the wave. 
We don't need to be on the opposite side of, of the team. We don't even need to pick a team. We can just we just make money. The reason why we lost money on MMAT because we pick a team. And the reason I can reflect on tell the reason why I'm losing 14k by the point right now is we have 14k in a red. It's been this is my seventh year trading. This is the only year that I've been unprofitable. This is the only time I've seen red. Why? Because I decided to take a side. I decided to take I decided to take George's side, which I shouldn't. I should never done that. Every information is factual. Every information is neutral. There's no such thing as bullish or bearish news entirely. All I have to do is I have to allocate my money right. And once I'm getting out of this hole, I, ha I have to be very disciplined like before. As you guys know that I have commitment issues. That's why probably I it's hard for me to find a girlfriend or whatever. Because all of the these years of day trading, all of these years of looking at the market, I have this very interesting perspective of seeing how relationship goes. It's just like buying a business, selling it, buying it again, investing something, wait for some catalyst, and, and identify the real catalyst and identify what is FUD, what is real, just bearish news by hitting raft in bullish new wrappers. Like, honestly, at this point, it's like, all right, we hit our sub target, like, you know, in, in a short term period of time, and we're going to pivot, we're going to consolidate, we're going to sort of like, how do you say this in a nicer way? We're trying to weave out all the bad subs. Like, we don't need all these hate. I mean, of course, we love haters because you guys encourage me to be true all the time. But at the same time, when you look at all these hateful comments, and and and, and half of the time, you'll be like, all right, all right we're just going to laugh about it, right? But half of the time, it also give you a little bit of a mental toll at the same time. But at the same time, it's like, when you affect my emotions, it's very irrational for me to get affected. Because why would I, why would I argue? Why do I argue with dumb people? Like, why would I do that, right? It's, it's just me being silly at this point. Anyways, this is just some random reflection video that I decided to make, um, you know, before midnight of Friday, because I really want to, because I've been reading a lot of financial statement. I've been, I've been reading a lot of new stuff about nanotechnology. And, and the more I see this thing, the more I'm like, this is going to be very interesting. Anyways, uh, see you guys on the upside. If you guys see this video, probably going to be like Sunday morning or Saturday afternoon or whatever, depending on how uh, dude number two schedule is. And a lot of people are like, who's number two? You know what? Next week, when we get together and we film some like general videos, I will let him talk something, you know, about real estate because he's, he's itching about expanding this channel to like a, you know, a different kind of, you know, focus we have. We got, we cover crypto, we cover everything. And of course we're going to do MMAT uh, daily videos, but at the same time, it's like, you know, it really hurt us because of the sheeple mentality. Cause you guys just want to take teams. No, if you want to be a good trader, you should never take teams. And I was wrong. I shouldn't take the, the, I should not put myself into George shoes cause I will never understand him. Because hey, a he's he he got a PhD. I'm a Stanford reject for PhD perspective, right? And B, I'm not 40 year old. I haven't run this company for 10 years. I can only see what I can see. And you know, maybe he's flawed or maybe I'm flawed, but I don't seem to grasp what he really is trying to accomplish here. And I can only place trades and can only be bearish or bullish or be neutral based on my understanding of how this thing's gonna work. And guess what? I do have credibility. Why? Because me and number two were trained by one of the top lines of VCs in the entire nation. We understand what we're doing when we're picking companies in terms of like the early stage or mid stage, uh, even growth stage, because, you know, one of my other mentors used to do semiconductor fabrication in, you know, in Malaysia, in Singapore. And he's one of the biggest CEOs when, you know, when semiconductors are just on the rise. Anyways, uh, see you guys on the upside. If you haven't liked this video, go smash the like button. If you don't like the video, go smash that unlike button. Do you think I care? I don't. Do you think we care? We don't. Why? Because there's three consistent people keep unliking this video anyways. Keep unliking all of our videos. And you know you will get good lucky when you sub to this channel. And you know, if you unsub, just be happy with you losing money because you do not have the foresight to see what is really going on. Or you just you just fail, you just fail to accept the truth. You're in denial. Okay, I've already way past that denial stage. See you guys on the outside. Have fun.